If your RV has a skylight like my Leisure Travel Van 2021 twin bed model does, I'm going to show you how you can easily pop up through that skylight, install your dish in a roof mount that's already pre-mounted on your roof, and this way you don't actually have to climb on the roof yourself. You just pop up through the skylight with the dish and drop it into the mount position and connect the cables. The other nice thing about this installation method is I left enough cable that attaches to the dish itself that if I'm under some trees and I have obstructions and it's not good to mount this on the roof because I won't get a good signal, I can simply jump on the roof, connect this cable that goes to the dish to my pre-existing pre-wired uh, cable that comes from the router down below connect it here and then just toss this down the side of the RV and stick my dish somewhere away from the RV and away from the obstruction. So I have the best of both worlds. I can either mount it on the roof or I can mount it um, away from the RV. So let's see how I did that. If you find this video helpful, I would ask you to like the video. And if you want to see more videos where I describe improvements I make to this RV and also some fixes to problems that will come up over time, you may want to subscribe to this channel. So how did I handle the cable that goes from the router to the Starlink itself? I wanted the setup to be simple. So I had to split the cable in two, two parts. And so I simply cut the cable. I left enough cable to go down through a hole in the roof to where I have the router stationed inside the RV. And I'll show you in a moment. I used the same hole through the roof and down into the interior of the RV that I used to run my solar wire cables. So that was pretty straightforward. And the other part of the cable will come up onto the roof whenever I need it, whenever I'm putting the dish up here. And this part of the cable will stay here all the time. So what I needed to do was put new connectors on either end of the cut cable. So I used these RJ45 connectors, and this one has a strain relief on it, so it grabs a hold of the cable itself. And you can see online a lot of different videos on exactly how to make these RJ45 connectors on the ends of the cable so they get the wiring right and everything. And I bought one of these RJ45 watertight connectors to use to make the connection on the roof. So this actually uh, unscrews and it comes in multiple pieces. So what you see here are the back end screw on connectors on this cable. So you put those on before you make uh, this RJ45 connection here, and you do the same thing on this side. And then the piece in the center is the one that allows the pass through from one cable to the next. So this will stay permanently installed here, and then this is screwed in. And there's a little blue gasket here, which is part of the watertight seal. So this will stay on the roof here, tighten this up as well. And in order for this not to be exposed to the elements when I'm not using it, I simply got a three quarter inch irrigation pipe cap. And then this can screw on to this end, tighten it down. And that'll keep the elements out of here until I'm ready to put my dish on the roof. And then I simply unscrew this, make this connection, and then tighten it up here i got to loosen this part and tighten up this end here. As you tighten it, it also, on this end, it tightens around the wire itself. And that's probably good enough for now. And then I can screw this on here. And now I'm connected on the roof. And when I'm done, I simply disconnect this side disconnect here, put the cap back on, then I can take my, my dish and the 
this part of the cable with me. So this will sit on the roof. I'm gonna secure it here with a tie down so it doesn't move around. So on the roof, I have the cable that's permanently mounted on the roof that runs from just in front of the skylight underneath the solar panel, comes out there. And then I have it go into this junction box from AM Solar that I used to bring my solar cables. So here are my solar cables here down from the roof into the RV. And if you wanna see where I exactly I drilled the hole and how I fished the wires down there for the solar, and it works the same as the solar for the uh, Starling cable, you can watch my other video, which shows the solar panel installation procedure, and it shows all this cable stuff as well. So then I used one of these connectors, pass-through connectors here, where it will tighten around the outer part of the cable and give a watertight seal as it comes through here. And then I pass the cable um, through this hole up to the roof. So for the installation, when I cut this wire, I'm going to route that part of the cable up through the roof through this hole without the RJ45 connector on the end because that's a lot easier to do. And then also it has to go through this thing here, which is not designed to have the RJ45 connector pass through it either. So the cut wire comes up through the roof as opposed to the solar wires, which go down to connect with the battery below. And then once it's up here, then I put the RJ45 connector on it. And I basically, I pulled a lot of cable through so that I could bring that cable down through the skylight onto the kitchen counter. And then I did my RJ45 installation down there. And then I pulled the cable back up and took out any slack so that it is like it is now. And that just made it a lot easier. It was easier to do the RJ45 connector down in the kitchen than to try to do it up here in this limited space on the roof. And then the cover goes on here and we're good to go. So I wanna thank Mitch on the um, Leisure Travel Van uh, Sprinter Forum. He let me know which connectors uh, to make the RJ45 connection with that he used and which uh, pass-through connector, watertight pass-through connector, which were these two. I ended up buying two more watertight connectors in another package, a slightly different design without the strain relief of these RJ45 connectors. Because when I first tried this before putting this on the cable, I had trouble getting this in there. It was like, wouldn't fit in there. And so I tried different versions of these and it still didn't fit in there. And then I tried different versions of these and it still didn't fit in there. I could finally force it in and it was tough to get it in, tough to get it back out. And I thought that's not gonna work. And the, you know, when I look at this one, which I bought, which looks different. If you look at the inner connector piece, it still has the same blue gasket. This looks the same as this. They look identical. I think those are made in the same factory. They just put different outer covers on them. This one is actually a different design, clearly not the same, but I had the same problem getting these in here and to kind of force them in there and eventually they get in there. And frankly, this one might be the best fit of all. But what I did find in the end, when I crimped this onto the cable with the crimp connector, then it started to fit in here without me having to force it in or force it back out. So. Not exactly sure why the crimper made this fit better because it's not supposed to change the dimensions of any other part of this, but that's just the case. It worked that way. And so using this one, as I showed before, and this one with the strain relief, and I'll put links to all these, I was able to make the connections, get the Starlink to uh, connect to the satellite network and get on the internet. And so I tested it over a couple of different days for a few hours 
and seemed to work fine. I have not gone on a trip with it yet, so I haven't tested it in the field, but I did want to pause my RV Starlink over the winter because I'm not traveling. But I have every confidence that when I turn it back on, probably in April and go on my next trip, that everything will work. So just be advised, you may find these don't fit in there so readily until you crimp it. But I think any of these ultimately would work because I had the same trouble initially getting them to fit in there before I crimped it onto the wire. So my Starlink cable comes down through the roof as I showed through the same junction box that I use for my solar cables. And the solar cables as well as the Starlink cable come down through the roof and back behind this wall here. Let me take this out. And then you can see the Starlink cable. Here's the red and black solar cables. And then there's the Starlink cable there. And it goes back behind this wall, behind this cabinet here. And then it comes out on this side. And I created a hole in the panel here with a rubberized feed through. And then the cable is here. And then here's the other end of this cable. And I can just plug this into my router and let my router sit up here. If I want to move my router to another part of the interior, I have left some excess cable behind this wall. So I can simply pull this cable out and extend this down if I want to extend it down in this region here. So for my application, I chose to put the router in the cubby hole above the driver's side. And so I can set it back in there and still put other things in there. And then I run the power cord down to this power outlet if I'm on shore power or over to one of these outlets up here if I'm on inverter power. And I can also close this most of the way to get it out of the way. And so you can put the router up there. I have, I could have left it on this side, but I chose this side to be close to the power outlets. And in fact, I have enough length on that cable, as I mentioned before. I could actually bring the router down in case I wanted to set it down somewhere in this area here. So I'm gonna use the Starlink roof pivot mount to mount the Starlink dish on the roof. So this is the pivot mount. It's designed so that it can pivot in the up position and lock in place. And then the dish slides in here with the cable. Now the question is how to mount this on the roof. So there's two screw holes here but I definitely don't want to screw this into the roof. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 3M VHB tape to hold it securely to the roof like I did when I mounted my solar panels on the roof. But if I look at the bottom of this pivot mount, there's no flat, really large flat surface area. It's indented everywhere and if I put the VHB tape here, there's not much contact area. Now this is not very heavy, and in the travel mode, this will be down, so there won't be much uh, force on it to pull it off the roof. So you might be able to get away with just putting the VHB tape on the raised surface here. But I'm gonna use the same technique that I used when I mounted my solar panels. I'm gonna use some aluminum plates, so I had some three by four aluminum plates left over. And what I did is I drilled a hole through the plate and I countersunk it so I could fit this bolt in there. And it's countersunk so the bolt lies flat. So the VHB tape will go on this side and then this will sit and be secured on the roof with the VHB tape. And then the Starlink will go on there I will add a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut to hold this securely. And then I'll have the same thing on the other side. So what I need to do 
is I need to thoroughly clean this surface. I've already washed it off uh, with soap and water because it comes from the factory with a little bit of oil on it. And then I'm going to use some alcohol and some paper towels to clean the surface before I put the VHB tape on. And then when I put this on the roof, I'm also going to clean the spot on the roof with the alcohol and the uh, paper towels as well. So let me put the VHB tape on here and get it ready to install on the roof. So I've applied the VHB tape to the bottom of each of the aluminum plates and then I fastened the aluminum plates in position using a uh, quarter 20 screws with the uh, washer and the lock washer. I also drilled um, a little chamfer in the top of the screw so that I could fit a screwdriver blade in there in case I ever have trouble uh, getting this off because I don't want the bolt to rotate in there since there's nothing that will hold it firmly in place if it gets a little bit too tight. But now we're ready to go on the roof and I just need to clean the surface of the roof first with some soap and water and then alcohol where I'm going to mount this. All right, so I now have uh, locked it down in position with the 3M VHB tape and made sure I located it uh, where I needed to so I can just pop out of the skylight, reach over with the dish itself and insert it in the upright post there. And I'm going to wait for this 3M tape to harden. It takes about 72 hours to completely harden. And then I'm going to remove the mount and seal around the edges of the aluminum plate so water doesn't get in there underneath the 3M tape and start to loosen it. So here's the finished assembly. Just pop up through the uh, skylight as I said before. Put the dish along with its cable into the pivot mount and then connect the other end of the cable to the watertight connector that is permanently mounted on the roof and I'm set to go. Now again if I'm under some trees or something I left enough cable here so that instead of uh, connecting the dish to the pivot mount I would just toss this cable off to the side to one side or the other depending on where I want to set the uh, dish up and mount this in the uh, four-legged tripod mount that comes with it and that way I have the best of both worlds. So ho hopefully you found this video useful and gave you some ideas of how to do a roof mount in a way that's a little different than what other people have done. In any case, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like the video. And if you want to see more from my RV channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.